Because of their nature, Chromebooks get used on the go a lot. They're quick to boot up and quick to get into tasks, so people that use them tend to find themselves in places like coffee shops or airports where they don't have all their extra stuff around. They don't have a desk or external display, and mouse and all that stuff. So they need one device that can get everything done all in one package, maybe just right in their lap. And for road warriors like that, this might be just the Chromebook. So this is the Lenovo Yoga Chromebook C630 and it is, by all definitions, a great portable workstation. It's a device that has a big enough screen to make you productive when you're on the go, but it adds so much more to that equation. There's so many things this Chromebook gets right, and no, it's not perfect, no Chromebook is, but this one is a really, really great workstation, and we wanna tell you why. Oh, and by the way, when you are working on the go at a coffee shop or something like that, you really need to protect your privacy, and NordVPN does that better than anybody else on your Chromebook, on your phone, on any device really. All you gotta do is go over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN, check them out and get started today. So let's start off with the build quality of this. Uh, it's something we need to talk about because this is a big device. 15.6 inches, uh, it's 17 millimeters thick, which is not too bad, but it's about four pounds, but it's solid aluminum and it's built like a tank and it feels really, really good. The the way the, the finish on the outside of the case feels, uh, it's just really, really well put together and exudes quality from top to bottom. I really, really liked just handling it in general. And yeah, 15.6 inches is bigger than most Chromebooks, but it's really not that big of a device in general. Fits in most backpacks, no big deal there. It is a convertible uh, and, and that's important because no, you're not gonna use this thing as a tablet. I mean, it's just ridiculously large as a tablet, but you can fold it into a tent mode or something like that if you're on an airplane or if you're in a situation like where you don't have much space and you just need to use the touch screen, you can fold it into that display display mode in your lap and really still get a lot of stuff done and kind of utilize the touch screen as you would on a really, really oversized tablet. But overall, Lenovo's just done a great job of putting together just a solid, solid Chromebook that looks every part premium and feels it as well. Now we can't talk about this device without talking about what Lenovo put up as its main selling point, which is the screen. If you remember when it was announced all the way back in September, this device was actually announced as the world's first 4K Chromebook. This one does not have 4K, and from what we can hear from Lenovo at this point right now, we don't know when or if the 4K device is even gonna come to the States. So don't hold your breath for that, and don't let that be a decision-making process that you're gonna wait around for the 4K display. The good news here is the 1080p display that's in this particular model and in the model that you can get right now looks really, really good. And just like other Chromebooks that have come out at the end of 2018, it's just this nice, solid, full HD 16 by nine panel. It's got great viewing angles and it's got really slim bezels and the colors pop really well. And it's probably about 300 nits, which is bright enough for most scenarios that you're gonna be in. The thing just looks really good as pleasing to the eye. And oh, by the way, when you only push a full HD amount of pixels, which is 1920 by 1080, the processor doesn't have to work nearly as hard to push those pixels around the screen. So you also get the benefit of added performance here and you're no worse for wear as far as what you're looking at on the screen. I will say the colors on this are a little bit warm in temperature. So if I have it next to my monitor on my desk or if I've got it next to the Pixel Book, for instance, which is a little bit cool, it tends to look a little bit yellowish. So if you're looking at it in a display, like at a Best Buy or something, you might notice that. But honestly, using it all by itself, that warmness of the screen never really bothers me whatsoever. So accompanying that good screen is a really, really good keyboard and trackpad combo on this one. The one thing I will say is even though on Lenovo's website and on Best Buy and pretty much everywhere you see this thing listed, it says it's backlit. It definitely is not backlit and we can't get a firm answer from Lenovo on whether or not we're going to see that or not. So I don't know if their marketing campaign is just confused with what the actual device is. We're not really sure at this point, but what I can firmly tell you is that no device I don't think that you can buy right now is gonna be backlit, so don't expect that. And that is a little bit of a bummer with an overall dark device. It would be really awesome to see this thing backlit because the keyboard is so good. Lenovo has made great keyboards for a long time. This is no exception. It's clicky, travels great, and just typing on this thing is just butter. And the trackpad, 
though they don't tout it as glass, I'm pretty sure is etched glass. And so you get a really, really nice, smooth trackpad, great click. And overall, just inputting anything on this device feels great. It's super responsive and I really love it. I just wish they would have added backlighting for this. Along the sides, you're met with what has become a pretty familiar port selection. A lot of these devices that came out in the end of 2018 are based on the same baseboard, so it's not surprising that we would see this. But that's really, really good news here because we're getting the layout that gives us a USB Type-C on both sides, which can be used for charging, for display, for data transfer on either side but then an additional USB type A that can be used for any of your legacy peripherals without needing a dongle to convert USB-C to USB-A, which is really nice and can be really, really handy. You also get a Kensington lock, a headphone microphone jack. None of these things are surprising, but they're just nice things to have on your device. And you also get a micro SD card slot. You may not need that though, depending on which model of this thing you pick up, but we'll get to that in a second. The speakers on this thing are, um, okay. They aren't the worst thing I've ever heard, but they're not great. And we're starting to get some devices that have better speakers in them, uh, especially with the Pixel Slate. Even though it doesn't do a lot of things well, that one has some speakers that I love listening to stuff on. This one does not fall in that camp. They're just laptop speakers, so don't expect anything crazy with them. And as I said just a second ago, you may not need that micro SD card slot. That's because inside of this thing with the Core i5 model, you're getting 128 gigs of internal storage. So a la Pixelbook and a couple other devices that have come out, it's also paired up with eight gigs of RAM. And this is the Core i5 that is the U series. So if you're confused by Intel's naming schemes, we kind of are too. We really have to look this stuff up a lot. But in general, the U series, so if it has a U in the model name anywhere, that means it's a fanned processor. It means it absorbs a little bit more power as it's doing its tasks and it needs a fan to keep it cool. That also means it's a lot more powerful. It's more of a desktop class processor and that's what this has in it. So there's a Core i5 and a Core i3 model that you can get. The Core i5 has 128 gigs of storage. The Core i3 that Lenovo sells comes with 64 gigs of internal storage. Either one of those is a lot for Chrome OS. The operating system doesn't take up much room. And honestly, you just don't need that much storage on Chromebooks. They want you to do cloud computing in general. And so 128 gigs of storage for me personally has always just been so much more storage than I ever even think about needing. So yeah, you may need that micro SD card slot if you store everything you've got on uh, local drives and stuff like that. But in general, most users, 64 gigs is plenty. And this thing just flies with those internals. And we don't have the i3, but we've had other devices with the i3 they're shipping. So we can tell you, either the i3 or the i5, these U-series processors with a 1080p screen, absolutely fly. I mean, things that you would try to do on the Pixel Book or the Pixel Slate that are, you know, the latest and greatest, you know, supposed to be the best thing and they're expensive and give you the best performance that you could possibly think of, this thing will smoke them. Uh, along with the Dell Chromebook, uh, the Inspiron Chromebook, the HP X360, they all have this same kind of baseboard and processor set in them and they absolutely fly. I can't stress that enough. If you want the fastest Chromebook you can get, this thing absolutely blows the doors off. Um, I'm not even gonna tell you Octane scores and stuff because they vary and benchmarks are benchmarks. I'm telling you real world performance, actually putting this thing through its paces, nothing I could throw at it would slow it down. Absolutely nothing. And the choke point for Chromebooks right now is some of the tablet multitasking, no issues whatsoever. I mean, I had multiple tabs, multiple instances of HD videos running at the same time and all of that stuff that stutters like crazy on the Pixel Slate no issue whatsoever on this device. So if you want something fast, this is your Chromebook. So with all of that in mind, with all the specs and all the stuff that we can talk about, the goods and the bads, and this thing's mostly good, it still comes down to the fact that because of the screen size and real estate you get on this thing, it is made for people on the go. Again, it's not the lightest Chromebook you're ever gonna see. It's not the, the smallest Chromebook you're ever gonna use. But when you are actually out on the road, when you are actually away from your desk and having to get stuff done, this extra screen real estate and the size of this device and the speed of this device make it something that is just a pleasure to work on. I can't tell you enough how much I've really, really enjoyed this device. And the only time that I even looked at it and thought, there's one thing I wish it would have was with backlighting on the keys. There were a few times when I had it at home in my lap and we just had a lamp on or something in the living room and it was kind of tough to see the keys. And I know for some of you that's a deal breaker and that's so unfortunate, especially since they list it with backlit keys on the website. So I, 
Lenovo, if you're listening, please start shipping this thing with backlit keys. People will buy it for that purpose. And apart from that one thing, as far as having a device that is a portable workhorse that you can take with you on the road and get stuff done, this thing's it. It MSRPs for $600 for the, the Core i3 version, $700, $720 for the Core i5 version. I would tell you the Core i3 version is plenty. You still get those eight gigs of RAM and I think 64 gigs of internal storage is plenty. But we see sales on these Chromebooks all the time. I mean, prices are volatile and it's not gonna be a big deal to see probably the 700 down into the 600 and 550 range and maybe to see that new $600 one down into the 500 and 450 range. And at those prices, absolutely get one of these things if a larger Chromebook is even a little bit on your radar because this thing is a fantastic, fantastic device. I can't recommend it enough. Lenovo's done just a really, really good job with this one. But guys, that's it for this one. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button below. And until next time, we'll see you.